Before getting into today's episode, we'd like to thank Mac Performance PT for sponsoring the Walk On Pod. For more on their services and contact information, click the link in our Instagram bio where you will be led to their website. Mac Performance PT, helping Sacramento athletes live life without limits. Thank you for tuning back into the Walk On Pod. I am Luke Abdolovich. With me, as always, is Tommy Ball and Jared Waters, and we're back to our regularly scheduled program where we do have a special guest with us today. Um, I'm very excited for this guest. It is a fellow Pacific alumni, um, and for for a podcast that really doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to golf, we have our first golfer on with us today. So uh, we got my main man, Riley Killip, here with us today. Riley, we really appreciate you being here with us, man. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately, so great to say that instead of just listen to it nice look at that lovely we we love a guy who's prepared you know um but uh riley and i met at pacific uh obviously and um you know we got close just through mutual friends and everything and he's a really good dude he works really hard and i got to catch up with him a couple weeks ago when i was back on campus and he was kind of telling me what he was going through and uh you know where he's taking his life with sports and with golf and and all these other things and uh, i kind of thought what he was trying to do and what he was pushing for really fits what we uh, talk about here on the walk on pod. So I thought it'd be a perfect time to get him on and, you know, let him uh, have his platform to talk about it. So Riley, sure. like I said, the floor is yours and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, so basically like kind of starting with where I, where I got into golf. Um, I got my first set of clubs when I was five uh, from my aunt, but and I took like one lesson, but I was never like super into it um soccer was like my first passion and I played select soccer until I was 13 14 um but I didn't love the way that that was going as far as like the coaching that I had at the club I was playing for and I would always play whatever sport was in season kind of on the side so I'd play junior golf in the summers here in Olympia um at Olympia Country Club and so soccer kind of got to the point where I was like you know what like I kind of want control of the result for me uh, as opposed to more of a team sport. So um, ended up making the leap and started playing more competitive golf at like 13, 14, kind of like I said. Um, and then played through high school, um, ended up getting an opportunity to play at Sonoma State my freshman year, which was, I mean, super thankful for that opportunity. Um, and, you know, everybody that I met there and the experiences that I had, um, unfortunately, the school was not the right fit for me. So I transferred to Concordia, Portland, which is a small school in Portland, Oregon, um, and met so many great people there, like truly had such an awesome experience there. Um, We had a great team. I think at one point, my junior year, we were 11th in the country for Division II. Like we were, we were balling. Um, But unfortunately, made some poor financial decisions um, and they ended up, the Lutheran church ended up pulling the funding for the school. Mm. So school shut down. So had to find a new home. Um, and this is all like right around COVID times too. Like they had told us the school was shutting down in February, I think. And then in March, like I had to say goodbye to people that I haven't seen since then in 2019, which is Crazy. absolutely wild. Yeah. Um, but I was fortunate to get an opportunity at Pacific to continue my academic and college career. And you know, met a lot of great people at Pacific too. And, um, super thankful for my experience there. Um, but then after that, like, I'd always just assume that I would kind of turn professional after my college career was over, but I definitely experienced like some serious burnout in my fifth year at Pacific. Um, and was trying to like scramble a little bit to figure out what I was doing. Like after I graduated, I remember kind of sitting in my bedroom and just being like, dude, what, like, I don't have any obligations. I like trying to figure out if I'm going to like what I'm going to do working that summer. And it was such a like almost scary feeling. Like, unless you've gone through it, it's hard to describe because it's so empty. Like you've gone from a regimented schedule every single day, you're putting in work towards this goal um, and representing your school. And then you get to a point where you're like, you know, it's not that necessarily nobody cares what you're doing, but it's a point where it's like your coaches and all, you know, all of the people that are involved in the athletic department aren't there anymore. And you're kind of just like on your own to figure everything out. So, um, 
I decided to pursue a master's degree. Um, so I got a master's in, it's kind of a long, kind of a long degree, but it's a master's of science in sport analytics and the emphasis is sport performance. So basically a lot of uh, data analytics kind of taking a look at how an athlete is performing in a certain, I mean, whether it's in game or like through a certain movement, like you can get super broad and super narrow. Um, but I really have enjoyed doing that. And then uh, I was also fortunate at the same time to get an opportunity to work and do some social media for Pacific athletics. And um, during this time, I was just like, totally put the clubs away. Like I didn't touch my clubs for like six months, genuinely did not touch them, which was also very strange. Um, but then kind of, you know, got to the point where I was like, you know, I'd, I'd like to start playing golf again, just for fun. Um, and got back into it at the beginning of last year. So 2023, just like with the sole purpose of like, okay, I just want to have fun doing this again, because it got to the point where I was like this, you know, this thing that is kind of my outlet for so much of the stresses in my life uh, or just, you know, having a place to decompress, like that was always the golf course for me. So it was weird not to have that for a little bit, but got back, to, got back into it a bit. And towards the end of last year, uh, I started playing a few tournaments again, just kind of unserious, just see what happened. Um, and at the end of last year, I was also fortunate enough to get an opportunity to um, get a, or to have a digital media internship at Stanford for Stanford athletics. So I've been there since last September and I've been basically kind of getting back or got back into golf kind of at the end of last year and have been really working hard at trying to balance everything since then. So now I'm at the point where I'm, I'm playing competitive golf again, trying to balance everything. Um, and I'm super excited about you know, where my game is at now compared to where it was at the end of my college career. So it's been, it's been a journey for sure from the first time that I set on campus to where I am now, but I feel excited about what's up next. I like that. I like that. You see, you know, we, we talk here at the walk on pod, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we talk about playing a sport or doing whatever you want to do, whatever, if it's with sports or if it's with your job or if it's with school, whatever it is, because you have a passion for it you know what i mean and we don't want we talk about you don't want to do it because it feels like a job or it feels like a task or it feels like it's a burden like doing it just because purely you have a passion for it so i wanted to ask you when you kind of went through that period where you felt like you were kind of burnt out and i'm sure it was a lot mentally and physically like golf and i'm sure we'll get into this conversation golf is probably more taxing mentally than it is physically i, I don't want to speak for you but um uh, it's it's arguably the most mentally tough sport out there um going through that transition from burning out to kind of finding your way back to the game and everything what do you think was the key motivating factor to being like man i i know where my game can get to and like i want to see what i can really push the ceiling to good question um i think i've always believed that i'm capable of doing great things i'm not sure i mean it's tough to pinpoint exactly where that or what that could mean. But I think a lot of that comes from my parents and just like the support that they've given me and the sacrifices that they've made. Um, and I think that I've shown spurts of greatness over the course of my college career and junior career. So I've seen, and I mean, like you understand playing golf casually, like you can hit the shot, the same shot that a tour pro hits, right? Like it happens just maybe not as frequently as like a tour pro does it. But I think that, um, I think that I have got, or like garnered that belief from through my parents, but um, I don't know. It's a little bit difficult to say in that sense, I guess. No, I, I, I get it. It was definitely a loaded question, but uh, I just think it's dope. I think it's dope for someone like you. And it's honestly a pretty quick turnaround. Like that's a, a two and a half to three year span of, man, I really feel burnt out. Like I got to decide what I got to do to now you're talking about how excited you are to to see the next level that you can take a step in your game. And I feel like as a mature athlete and, and for someone like myself, who's trying to figure out their own way in the professional sports scene, like it's, it's, it's super dope and, and commendable to see, because I don't think that like intrinsic motivation is common with a lot of people. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. I think, 
also just kind of expanding on that um great i mean greatness can be defined as you know, pretty much whatever you like it's not necessarily like winning a ton of major championships but just being able to do the things that i love well and the belief that i can continue to get better and there's not necessarily a ceiling for that yeah no yeah. that's that's dope kind of to piggyback off that uh i was curious because obviously golf is so much different than basketball and the there's different tons of different reasons for burning out but what do you think like in a sport like golf uh like Lucas talked about being so mentally taxing. What do you think was the number one factor for, for burnout or what do you see like in your friends and your teammates and things like that? Like what's where, like, is it, you know, is it that they're tired of the travel or they're tired of, they don't like going to the range every day or just like things like that. Like basketball, it's, it usually comes down to like, Oh, I got to a level where I'm not playing as much as I should be playing or think I should Mm -hmm. be playing or like, so it's not fun anymore. Whereas like golf, like, unless you're just like, I mean, even if you're missing cuts, you still get to compete like two, right. at least two of the days. Right. So it's like, it's right. really on you. So what's like, what's the main factor you felt in yourself and that you see as, as like a burnout factor for, for golf? I think, and I've talked a bit about this with uh, the sports psychologist that I work with. I think looking back, a lot of it was my mentality. Um, I think I, part of the reason of like of where I, or how I got to where I've gotten to was because I was hard on myself. But I think that through the kind of COVID period, because I had a lot of time to practice. So I practiced a lot during COVID. And I think that combined with also getting on campus at Pacific and just being really hard on myself mentally um, and not, I mean, not understanding the reason why I play golf, which is because I enjoy it. And like, I enjoy hitting good shots. I enjoy the feeling of like flushing a long iron or hitting, a, you know, hitting the shot that I'm trying to and let, let I see in my head. Um, so just being really hard on myself and, and having those negative or like that negative viewpoint kind of snowball, it just kind of got to a point where I was like, I'm, you know, I don't want to hit a golf shot because I don't want that negative right. uh, voice in my head. Is there, is there any, like, this is like two second parts of that is, in golf, like, is there, what's, is there a lot of pressure from the coaches and stuff like that while you're in competition or is it more pressure during the practice time? Um, I would say definitely in competition. Um, you know, some people hide it, hide their nervousness a little bit better than others. And, you know, everybody is a different individual. So all the different players on the team need different things during a competitive round of golf. Um, but I think like I'd definitely be lying if I was saying there weren't times where I would hit a bad shot and be like, Oh my gosh, or like I'm going to get ripped for that from whoever mm-hmm. coach yeah, you know, yeah. across three different programs. So. That's you. That's I was curious if they do that. If you're like, what the, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like how basketball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it happens, man. It no, happens. Time out. You're like getting ready to putt. Like no time out, time out. Just get reached. <laughs> yeah. and you got to go hit a putt. <laughs> Play to the yeah. side off the car. No, it's definitely out there for sure. <laughs> That'd be crazy. It must be everybody. Yeah, yeah that Jared. would be a crazy scene. That would be Jared, Jared would not sure. fare well with that. He would Jared would not fare well. Yeah, no, us. no, no. That's not. Yeah, I have enough. Oh. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, no. Getting cussed out before you step on the green and hit the butt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> only positive things happening after that. Yeah. yeah. The problem would be is if I hit the putt, then I would be cussing back at the exactly. coach. That's where I, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would start talking shit. You'd be on your Luca. <laughs> that's where oh. it would go sideways. That's funny. No, I. Later in the program, I do want to get into some some player comparisons and, and stuff like that when we get to the starting five. Um, so I don't want to rush that conversation. But um, I want to rewind it back to when you were talking about when you first got your set of clubs, when you you said five, um, and then you didn't start taking it, like, super seriously until later in your life. Um, was there a moment, like, as you were growing up or as you were going through, like, these junior tournaments or in high school or even when you got to college that it kind of clicked for you that you were like, man, like, I could actually be really good at this sport? Because I feel like, again – it's I ask this question to a lot of guests, too, because I feel like in basketball, sometimes it's like one big game or like, you know, a, a big tournament or, you know, a, a big phone call from a coach or whatever it was. But like golf, I feel like it can almost be like a feel like it could be like one day on the range or like one shot, like a feel thing that you're like, wait, OK, this this is me. I know I can get it. So did you have a defining moment uh, growing up that that hit you? Um, I think. 
I mean, I would say like, if I had to pinpoint a moment where I was like, okay, wait, like, I think that this is, I think I could actually do something with this or, you know, maybe go a little bit further with this than I thought I could originally. Um, I played really well, like my junior year of high school. I think I, I won like five times um, just playing junior tournaments around Washington. And I played, I played really, really well at our high school league tournament. Um, i shot 68 64 like broke this whatever broke the single round scoring record broke the 36 hole score oh, whatever yeah come on you can say it with some confidence riley come on okay but <laughs> said, i was striping that <laughs> yeah. no i was i was hitting it so good i yeah, was pin hunting no that week i legitimately especially when i shot 64 i was like like i did i made one bogey and i over the 36 holes and i was like i felt invincible i was like there's no i'm not i'm just not gonna make a bogey this, this is the junior and, in high school you said yeah yeah, yeah and but that was also like one of the coolest moments was uh coming down 18 i was playing with two of my buddies actually joe highsmith and rj Mankey. and joe is actually on tour right now and then rj has some status on the corn Ferry tour um and i hold a wedge from like 100 yards to shoot 64 and like cap everything off it was wow. wild. all right scotty <laughs> that's wow. <laughs> yeah that's i just like i just like put it up there you know so in midst yeah. breaking the 36 hole record i also just canned on 18 yeah. 100 yards out yeah 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 right back at the clubhouse <laughs> no it was uh, the scene it was a wild scene it was literally so it was so funny too because it was with this like old like 60 degree wedge where like yeah, the bottom two that's... the bottom two grooves like didn't exist anymore because i'd chip so much with it <laughs> so i had to play i yeah literally i had to play i had to be like all right i need to land this like 10 short because i know that it's not spinning yeah that's yeah that's crazy i would say that's a pretty but, good moment <laughs> yeah and the the 36 hole scoring record was held by kyle stanley who was like one of the better players to come out of this area and he's been on tour for probably like at least seven or eight years though that's awesome when um when this is another thing i'm curious about just this is just me uh, being a, a geek uh is, yeah. uh when you're in high school or like when you start taking it seriously like what's like a legitimate like schedule for for mm -hmm. you like Great as a 14 question. year old like like are you playing every weekend are you how many balls are you striking every every day like like how does that work because like in basketball now it's kind of messed up and i don't agree with it but like like kids play every weekend like and i don't necessarily think you need to play every weekend but golf is obviously mm -hmm. different than basketball so it's like how did that work when you finally decided i'm gonna really focus at like 14 15 like are you like what's that schedule look like I mean, it's a little bit hard to quantify because I didn't ever think about it in like numbers wise. Uh, yeah. Um, but I feel like and I feel like my friends and parents can attest to this, but I was I feel like I was at the golf course like pretty much all of my free time. Which and that's not necessarily like I'm grinding, you know, it's not yeah. necessarily oh I'm oh I'm only doing drills, like I'm really doing this. Oh, like I was just there because I was having fun and I just wanted to get yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Gotcha. I love that. I love that. Jared and I were having a conversation very similar to that about a week ago about yeah. being in the gym where it's like, so backstory time. Yeah. Jared, Jared, I, I was helping out and covering for Jared as he was doing big time things the past month and you just um, stop, stop the gas. Don't listen to this guy. And he was like, yo, make sure like you tell some of these kids, like they got to work on certain stuff on their own, like get in the gym on their own. And I was like, yo, I don't, I don't really remember like us having that conversation very often because like, I just remember like wanting my parents to take me to the gym. Cause I wanted to play basketball. So like that, I feel yeah. like that's the same thing that you're saying. Like you just wanted to be at the course. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Just cause I mean, that was like, that was my spot. That's where I had fun. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that Interesting. But did you guys play every weekend? I guess like, did you like end up playing around like every week or like, the, the like uh the the equality of a round maybe you don't play straight 18 but maybe you play like nine here nine there kind of thing i think i mean again it's kind of similar like i, I can't really quantify it but i feel like i was probably playing 18 holes at least once a weekend if not twice gotcha yeah nice what a life i yeah. love that i mean you were just That's having fun jealous. out there <laughs> yeah it was just i was just out there for for the yeah good time. it's like you just said luke it was essentially like us just going to, to the gym to 
play some pickup or something at the sports yeah, complex or the yeah, exactly. and sports club. No, yeah. that's uh, that's, that's super dope. Oh, um, that's so, that's awesome. <laughs> We're learning things ourselves over here. Um, so as you transition to college, did you feel like that you ever had a flip in a mindset from where it was I'm just doing it for fun to where you like oh man like it's it's not I don't want to say it's a job but like you know how college athletics is it's it's a job essentially like was there ever a flip or yeah. did you feel like you kind of felt that whole thing until you know like we talked about you got to the negative burnout stage it was a lot more structured um at least like thinking about it freshman year obviously just because like you have classes and stuff and it's less so like oh I have school like in high school it's just like oh I have school and then I'm going to go to the golf course like that's like okay you know we have 6 a.m lift and then you know we're practicing from this time to this time and then you know we're playing we're playing around or playing qualifying on Wednesday Friday or whatever it may be so I think that was like I don't know if that was necessarily uh like a positive thing um I think it definitely set me up better for like where I'm at now but going from playing just for fun and obviously like I wanted to be like as good as I could be but going from playing just for fun to being so structured and practices being um I would say more intense than what I was used to was definitely a change mm. yeah no I, was, I can imagine that um two again two part question mm -hmm. was the CCA good in golf and was Cal State East Bay any good <laughs> uh the cca was pretty good my freshman year like we i what was it i think chico state was always really good and their coach was a young like young dude nick green he was a really nice guy um yeah so i remember chico being good i think east bay was like decent but my freshman year we were better than them you can just say um, they were ass, bro. I don't know any of them. <laughs> no, because I had friends. No, I had, I'm, I'm old, I had I'm friends old. on that team. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had friends on that you team, so I, I can't just air them out like that. <laughs> like, ah, oh, no, nah, they were okay, but, like, no. Nah, Jared probably – Jared would probably rather you say they're bad so he can be like, yeah, like, when it comes to East played. Bay Pioneers, like, I could have yeah, been a golf team. I could have played. <laughs> I could have played. Well – there's definitely a spot for you somewhere if you still want to play. <laughs> there you go, oh, I have four years of eligibility. I do. Look at that. <laughs> Look at Let's go ahead and make that happen. Let's go yeah, ahead and exactly. make that happen. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't think we should. Yeah. We should venture down that lane. Um, <laughs> this is. They're not ready for that amount of self negative talk. <laughs> I was just gonna say this. The. The fire, the yeah, fire yeah. coming Who's from the water. Who's this forty-year-old guy over here with an East Bay polo on? Get this guy off the course. <laughs> He's the. Why is he cussing his caddy out? <laughs> yeah, why did he show up with a five-year-old? I'm, like, what I'm, he Jared, doing? I'm Jared's caddy. I'm Jared's caddy. Just getting cussed out. <laughs> oh, it's I'm, the wrong I'm, club. I've been there. Just before. an emotional punching bag. <laughs> Oh, so hey, because so Riley, you? Riley, I'll before Luke can tell you, I'll just tell you the funniest part when. So when I first started getting into golf. Uh, a couple years ago, um, Luke and Will, our other friend who's really good at golf, would actually take turns being in, in the cart with me because uh, they just wanted to – they just couldn't handle being the emotional support system for an entire 18 every round. So they switched off. They were good sports about it. Yeah. It's, so real. it's much that's better so now real. though can we can we just much like, better but, yeah the, like, the I don't, growth has that, been none of that happened that's huge we support yeah. that yeah yeah no but yeah i was as, gonna burn as the out skill level is going up, off the ground yeah 100 <laughs> percent. as the skill level has gone up your your mental fortitude has also gone up so that's yeah. you know it's good growth yeah. it's um, important. so as okay uh let me let me figure out how i want to kind of word this you talked about so you finished up your career you got into your master's program where you started looking at sports analytics. And I know you talked about sports psychology as well. Did, did you change your approach to the game of golf after learning some of these things that might have no pertinence to golf, like from a textbook point of view, but obviously it's something you did your whole life at an extremely high level. Was there any application of that? Yeah, actually it's, that's a good question. Um, I, found the tech like the, the textbooks this sounds so i think like high school me would hate the sentence but i found the textbooks that we had super fascinating like i was yeah. really interested in in the stuff that i was learning which was really exciting because i can't necessarily say that there was any point in my life where i felt the same way especially <laughs> like as a whole as a whole for the degree um 
but especially like I found the like strength and conditioning and injury prevention stuff really interesting because I think like my experience again across three different universities as far as like strength and conditioning goes um, and like what I have picked up through like working with different trainers like golf specific trainers was like what I've what I've done in college was a lot of general it was just a lot it was basically like the baseball lift program like okay rotational sport we're just going to do the same thing and like lift heavy and I found it really fascinating to dive into like the like writing a schedule for the week as far as what the strength and conditioning looks like for the week and you know I'm still I feel like I'm still learning as far as like what does tapering look like you know how do I how do I train through certain competitions? Like there's still a lot that I'm curious about, but it's definitely established like a cool baseline for like asking questions and wanting to get answers to those questions. Yeah. So that's dope. I talk a lot about like figuring out my own routines, especially this year was a big learning year for me of how I can apply the things that I know, like I was going to prioritize versus the team and like where I could fit my own things in. And I feel like that's a similar situation. Like you're saying, like you had to learn different things, figure out where it was going to work for you. And, and as you continue to learn and grow, like it's going to all work together in that motion. So I could resonate with that for sure. My bad, Jared, I cut you no, off there. No, you didn't cut me off. Actually, that was, I, I'm glad you got, got that information off. Cause my question is like pretty, pretty like straightforward. Like at what, what, like what, how much emphasis do you think that teams like professional teams should be putting in on the analytics? Ooh, like in general, just like yeah, okay. Let's just take like a let's just let's take a team because I think that's like a more easy like I think that's a easier way to quantify is like like an NBA team like how much should they should they implement analytics into what they're doing? That's super interesting. So I um I can I'll kind of give like a two part answer to that. Yeah, so like no, no, I definitely. I went I met with our head of sport performance at Stanford uh, this last week, Tyler, and. I was asking about that because I'm interested in sport analytics and like, you know, exploring that path in the future. Um, but as far as like opportunities for that, there's not a ton of opportunities for like an entry level type of position for that. So we were talking about that and he said a lot of teams and he kind of used the NFL for an example, but I would assume the NBA is in a similar boat. Um, their analytics people focus a lot on like, how can we stretch the value of a dollar? So like how can we get it's it's kind of money ball esque. Yeah, but like how say, can we, yeah. sounds how like can money we ball maximize here? the dollar? Yeah. So he said like a lot of teams aren't necessarily focusing on like the analytics of how they play the sport at the mm -hmm. moment. It's a lot of the a lot on the financial side. Yeah. Well then now that's gonna play a bigger role now that NIL and all the yeah. all the stuff that's happening right. is like the value of a player Crazy. is essentially like how much money you're gonna get. Like it's that whole thing is yeah. great. I have, I have plenty of takes about that. Yeah. Well, there's actually a kid that like, I'm not going to put any <laughs> names out there, but there is a kid right. that has a very big offer on the table from Stanford. Yeah. So, well, I yeah. mean, and that's like the thing the board, is like, I'm well, just saying yeah. it's like, I'm not going to call anybody out. Sources saying, tell like, the waters right. camp that that's there not is what a I'm big saying. Is this, is, this a, is this a walk on pod bomb? Is this a woes bomb? Out of All, right, yeah. All I'm saying, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. This sounds like a conflict of interest for me. I don't know if I can be a yeah, part yeah. Of, of any breaking <laughs> news regarding Stanford. <laughs> Uh, we don't want to we don't want to violate any hippo rules right now so let's, yeah let's move definitely on not the right word but yeah that's okay. no, yeah it's all right good try there <laughs> but no, i 100 percent have had that conversation with uh with quite a few people where it's just like okay i'm taking a look at like you're telling me that you're gonna pay this guy x number of dollars and i assume like what does that value represent like there's no way that he's gonna generate that uh -huh. much money and more for the program like yeah. where is this money count i don't know and then and that's even for that's for big sports like yeah. people are people are paying like i mean i've allegedly heard of six figure sums for like golfers to to transfer from nil things and i was like look man if if somebody like a stud basketball player is transferring and you're telling me that he's worth x number of dollars i can guarantee you that a golfer is not going to generate a hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue for your school. 
So yeah. I'm 100 percent on board with that. I, I'm yeah, very yeah. yeah. They're yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if this Riley kid's thinking straight over here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good take though. I I, I like that. Um, um I have I have like one more real question, then I just have like some random golf quick uh fire offs. Uh so Jared, again, I apologize if I cut you off there. No, no, but I'm, it's all good. You you talked about going from three different schools, three different coaches, three different teams, three different strength and conditioning, all of this. It was also like three different areas of the world, three different areas of the country. I mean, I guess Sonoma State and, and uh Pacific are, you know, close not too far away. But different levels as well. What was the transition like? Like, because we talk a lot about different levels of basketball. There's different facilities, the, the type of players you're around, the type of coaches you're given, the type of amenities you get, all that. What was the transition like from school to school and, and getting integrated with all the different types of cultures, I guess? Yeah, I would say definitely uh, as far as facilities go, I think I upgraded every every time. So that was a big dub for me. Like my uh, well, after I transferred to Concordia Portland, we played Columbia Edgewater. Place is so good. Like we were so spoiled. I mean, yeah, we had absolutely no business being out there as like a Division two school. So their support was awesome. And then Pacific, obviously, um, the facility they have out at the reserve is really, really good. So it was great to spend a lot of time out there too. What's your lowest score at the reserve? Uh, I think I shot a bogey free 67 in qualifying. And I think that's the lowest. (laughs) That is not close to what I've shot. (laughs) Jared, Jared, what's your lowest score at the reserve? Oh, it might not be double figures. I I haven't played there in a while. It might've been the last time I think I've only played three times. And I think the last time I played was me, you, Dr. A and Mark. And that was yeah. years ago. That was yeah, I think it was like a year and a half ago because it was yeah. right after my season ended the first year. Yeah, I think my round was over when I popped it up into the water, like yeah. that was twenty eight yards out or something like that. So I was yeah, that was. All right, well, so if I it makes go- you feel any oh, better, go for it. My bad. if it makes you feel any better, like uh, that came out of absolutely nowhere. Like for a good portion of my time at Pacific, I had no idea where the ball was going. So it came out of absolutely nowhere. Riley, if you're shooting under 85, anything you like, it's, it's still better. So I'll take it. Oh, Even if I didn't know so, where the ball was going. <laughs> fair. So what's your, what's your favorite golf shot that you've ever hit? Do you have, do you oh, have that in mind? That, that's a crazy question. What do you think the number of golf shots you've hit in your career? That's like asking you, Tom, what's your favorite jumper you've ever hit? It was a Chris morning. It was a Chris morning. I just feel like I just feel like golf's a little different. Like maybe there's a maybe he hit one. I'm not even gonna try I'm not even gonna try to like get into golf lingo because I be honest, I don't know Jack. I don't know Jack about golf. But um I feel like that would be like I don't know, because what I've played I've played golf probably less than twenty times. But Whenever I hit a nice shot, I'm like, yeah, I'm about this is this is why I come back. Like, I think probably I'll go. I'll give you two. I'll give you my favorite shot, yeah. and then like my favorite shot I've seen somebody else hit. So like my favorite shot was when I was at Concordia. We were, um, we were like close to the lead, like in the hunt at Western Washington's event up in Bellingham, and I hadn't checked the leaderboard, so I didn't know where we were at. Um, but I was playing my last hole, like the 18th hole, and I was playing pretty good. I think I was like, uh, I think I was like three under on the day, three or four under on the day. Um, but I, the last hole is a par three, and I short sided myself. So, like, I didn't have much green to work with, and it was kind of like in not a good spot. Um, and I hit like a pretty disgusting little pitch that went to like two feet. And then tapped in for my par. And then I checked the leaderboard, and I was like, we were up by one. And I was like, oh my God, like we, that just won us this tournament. So that was probably my, that was probably yeah, my favorite that's awesome. shot that I've hit. And I would say favorite shot I've seen somebody hit was I was playing my buddy, Joe, the one, you know, he has his PGA tour card right now. Um, I was playing him in a match at, at this tournament called the PNGA, which is like, it's like 168 players play 36 holes, then it cuts to 64 and then you play match play. So we were playing each other in like the third round. So the round of 16 and he got, he hit this four iron on a par three. It was like 225 and to a back right pin. And he's also a lefty and he just flushes this four iron with like a two yard fade, like starts at like a yard right of the pin. It cuts like 
six feet and he has like four feet for birdie. And I was like, and he hit first. And I was like, dude, what am I like? I, at this point, I'm like, I can't hit my long irons at all. Like I can't even get them off the ground. I'm like, what am I supposed to do here, dude? You just, that was like literally one of the best golf shots I've ever seen. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. My, if you ever get a chance, Riley, my favorite is when Luke explains one of his nice golf shots. His, uh, his, his, like the energy he ex- expresses it with. It's like, yeah, I hit this little nice little cut. Little yeah, he gets it. Yeah, he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't like, see the problem. I'm not saying it's a problem. I'm just saying it's hilarious. I'm going to start recording it and send him to Riley so he can get a kick oh, out good. of it. I'm, pr- I'm pretty nah, sure I've had a conversation with yeah. or yeah. two about it. Yeah. Like, nah, <laughs> I was like 187 out. Wind was coming to, coming to my left. Into the fan a little no, bit. We'll give yeah. It, yeah, we'll give it like we'll give it like six years, and then we'll revisit this and sir, yeah. see where you stand on that. Yeah. I hope it's a chilly Monday morning. morning. Um, yeah. No, that's funny. I have. Okay, so now I just that's awesome, like, want to. That's awesome. Yeah, I want to reel off just quick, random. This is more for my own personal enjoyment. Uh, just sure. random golf questions. So, um, favorite golf brand? Oh, probably Titleist. Nice. Okay, so during in college, did you were you forced to use a certain brand, or was like per school or anything, or was it kind of just whatever fit you? No, like uh, our. At least at Pacific, our coach was like, I think he's on ping staff. So we got a pretty good deal on ping stuff. So I played a lot of ping stuff through college, but then I went because I was like, I mean, if I'm going to actually give this a run, I probably should go get professionally fit for like the first time in my life. So I did that in February and basically threw the bag title of stuff, except for like one or two clubs. Must be sitting right there in the kitchen. He took a look. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <baby. laughs> Um, that's a great right there. Right next that to the bed, incredible. man. This is yeah. like dreaming of so babies, man. <laughs> um, favorite course you've ever played? Oh, that's tough. Um, I would say not necessarily my favorite, like architecture wise, but from the for the vibes, uh, I played Mauna Kea in Hawaii. Um, after because oh, we went there, for, we went there for uh, a tournament with concordia and there was we played it after one of the tournament rounds like our coach was just like yo like we're gonna go play mount Akea. we have two room for two like does anyone want to go and i was like dude free golf like yes i'm coming, uh, I'm coming. yeah yeah you can't beat hawaii golf man I'm, i've played a lot of places and i haven't i'm not good but like at that level where I, you know it makes a huge difference but like as far as quality of course and like just the vibe yeah you just can't hawaii golf is, it's so it's so sick dude it's no you can't you can't beat it and oh. you wake up in the humid it's like so humid that you just don't yeah. even get a stretch you can just go straight to the first tee yeah no it's awesome uh i don't know if you said it already career low personal best uh okay i mean i need some parameters for this like from any tee or like back I mean, tees I would say, yeah, I guess, I guess like grown up golf, I guess might be the right term to say. I don't know. I <laughs> blues, guess blues are up. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I don't okay. know what you would put, like what standard high school like is, but I would say if you like went crazy low in high school, that's not like playing from the junior tees in the middle of the fairway. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. Yeah. We, well, we played, we played the front tees at Elkhorn for qualifying one round, which was sick. No, way. that was I I like I blacked out on the front nine. It was it was wild. I shot twenty five on the front nine. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. I remember that course. Too. We played that course one time. We did, but yeah, or I did. It, no, it you was, you didn't make it. I, I, I couldn't play make solo. it. We had yeah. a we had an extended practice. Uh, as yeah. I think is the politically correct term for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So well. five. I definitely Dude, it didn't was, do that. It was. It was insane. It was like I could truly do no wrong. Like I felt like I would, I would like sh- basically hit a ball straight off the hosel and it's going to like 25 feet and I make it. It was an, a complete out of body experience. You're in the I zone. Say. You're in the zone. Um, all right. Now, my, my last lead up question before we get into the starting five. Is there a golfer that either you grew up idolizing or as you got more into your playing career that you try to model your game after or still currently doing so uh 
if there's multiple golfers in that answer, that's cool too. If I'm stealing your uh, your your answers for the starting five, then you can say that and we can just move on. But I, I was just curious. No, I think um, I think I really liked Rory, uh, like as a kid, especially when he like when he was like 19, like young Rory with the like long curly hair and yeah. like the whatever he had like the Jumeirah States hat, like mm-hmm. the. Um, I loved watching him play golf. And I think as I got a little bit older, like Jordan Spieth burst onto the scene and obviously he's a little bit different now, but like he was an absolute world beater for a couple of years there. Like 2015 was insane. Like I, I got to see him at chambers that year cause I'm a Washington guy. So that was really cool, but his short game's still insane. So I think I wouldn't say I modeled my game after it, but I think I just like, like there were certain guys where I enjoyed watching play golf more than others. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Jared, do you have an answer for who you model your game after? Or... <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a right answer for that. You know what? I when I first I will um I will say this though, uh, because this is when I really started getting into the breakdown of golf. That the person that I watched when I started watching more golf and more actual professional golfer swing. Watching Colin Morikawa swing and how he takes the club away, I definitely, like, not that I do what he does, but, like, it definitely helped me realize, like, having control in that first move and being able to, like, not rush into the shot, and like, that definitely helped me, like, calm down some. That dude is, like, a and, robot. Yeah. Like, he's just, it's so smooth and slow back, and then he just, once yeah. he gets to his, like, drop points, like, just lets it rip. It's sick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, look at that. Perfect bleed up. So, uh, in honor of today's episode, we do have starting five golfers, um, and we didn't really put many parameters on it. So you can kind of take it whatever uh, route you want to here. Now, Riley, we usually give it to the guests in terms of how, um, we pick the order and everything. Uh, typically we do like a snake draft, like fantasy football draft or whatever and and if you want to pick the order for that you can do so and then we'll just do like one position at a time and then snake it back around so it's kind of on you how you want to do it uh i mean well you guys are the host i feel like you guys should be picking first i can take the last picks okay okay so um there was a little controversy the, the last week's this, episode we have we have we have not, a, we're not doing the the we're not doing the generator thing. no okay. how about i uh, Jared, you well, want to go first, we, man, so that you don't, you know. No, no, I think I think Tom Tom should go first. I'll okay, take okay. second. Then then Luke, then Riley yeah. said he wants to back clean up. So all right, Riley, and that means and you get back to back picks, Riley. Too, I do so have you a, get you go point guard, that. shooting guard, back to back. I do have a question. I do have a question then to play off that, Jared. Can we can we select any position right now, or do we are we are we straight point guard, shooting guard, small forward, like in order? I, I I don't care. What you know, because I've got James? I've got some golfers that I make sure that I lock down at certain positions. So <laughs> if you want to do whatever position, you can do whatever position, man. But this is yeah. your podcast too, brother. All right, let's do it. That's that's okay. how we're gonna do it. All right. Okay. So, we All can, right so any position. So rally. We can what select that any position like, with your pick. Yeah, it's not gonna be positional based. So like, if you want to get your best player off the board, you can pick your center first or pick your power forward first. You don't have to go point guard first. That's what he's saying. Okay. And it doesn't have to go in order. You could go small forward, then center, then point guard, and then fill it in that way. Sounds like a plan. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. With that being said, at the power forward, the first overall pick, I will be selecting the man himself. He's playing phenomenal golf. I don't watch much golf. I watched him perform this last week. And give me Bryson DeChambeau. That's that's power forward. That's, that's a good insane thing. to be a first pick. Yeah, like, Bryson DeChambeau at the power. You could have gotten that like fourth round, man. Yeah, what? <laughs> like I said, I don't know anything about golf, man. Don't know anything yeah, about I golf. Know. Hey, you. I'm. I mean, I'm. This is easy. I'm small forward. I'm going the most like. This is the ultimate utility. Give me Tiger at the small forward. Yeah, I, I mean, I've are we talking sure. like hit, Tiger now? Because I don't know if you want Tiger now going anywhere. No, all time. I thought forward. we were going all time, right? Oh. Yeah. I mean, it. it like I said, there's not uh, really any parameters. Yeah, I won't be yeah. going. Okay, time. fair I don't enough. Know anybody? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, give me Tiger, just Tiger in general, I guess. Or if you want me to say Tom. 2002 Tiger, you know, I don't know. But Tommy's <laughs> taking uh, Bryson in the middle of his bulk. Then 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The protein shakes on deck. Protein yeah. shakes on deck. We need all the rebounds. We need all the rebounds. <laughs> I remember, hey, like, just, just, I remember this was funny. Is that when this guy went from like playing in a major, and then like three days later, he was on the long drive contest trying to bank the ball like four hundred <laughs> yards. Hey man, he just that shot twenty sick. under. No, I'm not. Right. No, I'm not hating on him. I mean, he's actually yeah. good at golf, especially now that he has slim, like, Obviously got back to normal. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that like, that was fun, hilarious. Oh, like such a fun time in in golf was Bryson like disappearing for three weeks and coming back and playing like the Shriners and was just huge. It was, yeah, it was so sick. And when he was going through that thing, when he was like trying to sue Cobra because they wouldn't let him get a lower degree on his driver. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh man! There's yeah. Golf Twitter's the best. Look at that, Tom. Controversial Need... first pick. Yeah. Let's go! Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Go yeah, me. Small oh. forward. I got Tiger. My bad, Luke. Small forward. Yeah, I got you down. Uh, all right. I don't really have anyone that I like. Am too worried that people are gonna take. So I think I'm just gonna go position wise, and then if someone does get taken, then you know we'll make a play. Uh, my point guard. I need my point guard to control the game. I need my point guard to uh make sure my team is running the, the offense at the right speed that we're doing. Really control the tempo of the round. All right. So I got Patrick Cantlay at the point guard. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Just oh really wow. Sure that we we're playing nice, slow, steady brand of basketball. I hope there are shot clocks in this league. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. This guy's not gonna get a shot off. It's going to be like man. that the high school leagues that you see where they don't have shot clocks. and <laughs> They, they play four yeah. corners. Yeah. Yeah. In Oregon, we already talked Keep about away. that with freaking Bishop. I really like that. I really like that uh, That pick out of me, though. You can't tell me he's not a good point guard, man. Just a real – No, bro. He's an ad- you're right. He is an agitator, but really he's going to have a million turnovers because he's he can't – Chris Paul. No, he's Chris yeah. Paul, man. He's going to piss the other team off more than, than anything. The point guy. Yeah, plus, <laughs> plus he's got – I mean, this is very golf nerdy, but he's he's got DeWalt as a sponsor, so big tool guy. <laughs> that. That's awesome. <laughs> you so know, I can appreciate I can appreciate a guy who, who respects a power tool. Yeah, so oh. let's go, Cantlay. Jesus. Right, right, right. what do you got, man? All right. I'm gonna I'm just gonna go straight down the list like Luke's doing, but I think at point guard, I mean it may it may not be the prettiest shot in the world. But it's going in all the time. And bonus points to him because I saw a video of him playing pickup like a couple weeks ago. But gotta take Scotty Scheffler at point guard. That's awesome. That's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the good video pick. video of him playing pickup was so funny. <laughs> and he had the shirt on. He had didn't yeah. he have the uh, he had <laughs> Yeah, he was in a Pine it. Valley shirt. <laughs> I was like, dude, this guy's wild. He's playing he's playing pickup and like flexing on everybody. Like, okay, you're you're never gonna set foot on this problem property in your life yeah. you don't even know no, what it is none of those guys knew what that shirt was i promise yeah good take uh, all right back to back so i'm, I'm yeah. back to back yeah okay yeah, yeah. so then um shooting guard uh pj tour social put this out uh, a couple weeks ago they were talking about best basketball players on tour so this dude's got some he's got some people backing him up denny mccarthy probably a sleeper but i've from what i've heard all accounts he's lights out wow mm. Yeah, yeah Riley. Riley's prepared. Yeah. Respect. So, I mean, this guy—he knows what he's talking about, man. We should have known this. this now, like, can so he hang did. with Bryson on the block? I don't know, but it's not <laughs> no, that important. Absolutely it's not. Not, that important. not bulk. Nobody's hanging with bulky Bryson. <laughs> <laughs> Three week post bulk Bryson. My centerpiece, man. Yeah. My um, cornerstone. He's my franchise cornerstone. Uh, they okay, would I'm love my, that. That my shooting guard here. Um. I'm going to go with a real smooth score. Um, I would say arguably one of the most smooth swings all time. It's it's someone that I see a lot of people always bring the old clips on tournaments and stuff back of like, you know, never looked like he was too rushed, always playing his game. And, and he was always in the hunt. Uh, I feel like he was a household name for a while there, in like the early 2000s. Uh, I got Ernie Els at the shooting guard. Mm. Nice. Nice. I like that big. The big easy. Yeah. Um, okay. At point guard, uh, this is my favorite, uh, player on tour. Uh, he's not the biggest, but he really maximizes what he, what he has. He's, he's like true walk on point guard style, but, um, yeah, he's, he, he really grinds and works on his game and I feel like he's going to be a great leader for my team. So give me, uh, Matt, Fitpat- Matt Fitzpatrick at my point guard. Nice. Nice. This is, he is, he is a grinder. Guy. Yeah. This is perfect. Big this statistics is... guy. Yeah, Big definitely. Guy. guy, guy he... charts every single one of his uh, range shots. It's that's crazy. so wild. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Yeah. Uh, fellas, fellas, I like those selections, but you know, as a GM and the roster that I'm building, this is couldn't this couldn't be going better. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna solidify the front court, and my camp will be selecting John Rom at center. John Rom mm. at center. This guy's got um, the beefy boys down. <laughs> <laughs> You got the um, live boys down there. Yeah. And, and yeah. We're gonna follow we're gonna follow suit. We're gonna follow suit with Xander Shoffley at point guard. We're gonna get Xander yeah. Shoffley running the show. Fresh off the first game on holding on. Yeah. Holding on. Yeah, people are questioning his performance in big moments though. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, I just watched him sink that birdie putt to win to win the uh, PGA championship or whatever in Kentucky. So or whatever, I'm, whatever it can yeah. take. Yeah, I'm, com- well, I'm confident. That's valid. I'm confident what Xander bad. brings to the table for us. Now, now does he repeat in Paris this summer, Tommy? Mm. Yeah, of course he does. You, you know, think he I'm, does? I think he wow. does. I think he does. Yeah, he that's a, that's even more bold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, is, as as bold. GM as GM of this roster, I need to fully support my guy, so I'm going to put all my belief in Xander. All right. Actually, I would I would back that. I would potentially back that Paris pick because I don't know people. are People aren't saying that uh, winning a gold medal is a big deal yet. And I don't know if it feels like it. I, it needs to feel more like it's like, I don't know, a major that happens every four years, right? Like right. it's the pinnacle, pinnacle of sport. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's right. That's a good, good point. Uh, well, we, we can revisit this. We can revisit They're saying this your point guard, he, he's basically saying, people think your point guard has a Mickey Mouse medal, Tom. They do. That's, <laughs> they do. And And yeah. that's sad. And that's sad, but. Keep silencing the haters, Zan. Zan, man, it's my guy. Okay. Jared, it's your turn. All right, at, at my shooting guard, uh, I feel like uh, this guy is going to compliment Tiger really well. Uh, they have good chemistry, um, and I just this guy's just super steady, man. He's he's gonna he's gonna give me seventeen, eighteen a game every every night, and uh, and he's gonna keep you know all the extracurricular stuff out, out of our locker room. So uh, give me Tommy Fleetwood, Tommy Fleetwood at my shooting guard. Mm. I like that actually. He's making every single three and he's missing the layups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how six threes going. again. Six threes. Hey, he's gonna go six for eight from three. And he's so gonna go over for good. four. That's yeah. really good. That's over really for four good. for all yeah. the layups. He doesn't cut. Just run him no. quarter to quarter. He's gonna be Kevin Herter essentially. <laughs> okay. Nice, nice. That's good. <laughs> um, geez, that's wild. Okay. Uh small forward. There's no I, I'd be shocked. I mean, I feel like Riley's the only one that you know, potentially could have had this guy on his list. I, I guarantee he didn't. Um, the the broadest shoulders on tour. Um, this guy is built like a cinder block. Nobody's getting past him on the perimeter. He's a perimeter lockdown defender. I got Scott Stallings as my small oh. forward. Scott and Stallings now. is built like a fullback, literally. He's um, not a golfer. <laughs> No, I'm being I'm, I'm being so serious. Does yeah, he does he swing huge. like a butt? Like does he swing like a buff? Like does he have like a buff swing or no? Is it smooth? I mean, honestly, I don't know. I can't attest to that. Because if your shoulders I mean, are that strong. big, like how are you? Jared, gonna, I'm just big. telling you, he fills up a polo like no one else. Like it's crazy. Yes, <laughs> yes. but I'm telling you, this guy's Dylan Brooks out there. Like he's real stocky Ooh. build perimeter defender. Who was the guy that was cooking on the Masters and he was? He was also built like a fullback. I don't remember his name. He was having a hell of a Sunday. This and he was getting – Yeah, no, yeah, it was this year. And he was getting pissed when he would miss a shot. He was, like, cussing on camera. Like, he was hilarious. I'd never seen him before. He was wearing a purple polo on the Sunday. Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He was so funny. I'll go look at the leaderboard after this. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know. It wasn't he was Scott hilarious. Though. Like, I'll tell you no, that. no, it wasn't him. I know. I would have remembered that name. This guy was built like a fullback too, though. Yeah, I don't know. Shane good Lowry. Good pick. the leaderboard. I don't see. Uh-huh. Shane Lowry. It's a big body down there. I'll go look. <laughs> he, he's funny. Uh, all right, Riley. All right. Uh, let's go. I got small forward. Okay. Um, this guy, I mean, truly, like, he's all over the golf course. He's playing anywhere on the court. So, I'm taking Sahit Tagala. I mean, he's driving yeah. everywhere right now. We're trying, oh, he's driving yeah, it everywhere. Dude. But he's he's banging threes from everywhere, too. Yeah, I nah, he's been hooping. he's 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 becoming one of my favorite golfers, and and he's a, a documented Kings fan. So shout out to his golf. Oh, there right. you go. Well, it's it's like watching his rounds him on Sundays. 
anyways. It's, t- it's tough to win when you're in the trees all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Spoke like a true Kings fan. <laughs> crazy. Um, all right, back to you, Riley. Okay. Let's see. So then uh power forward. This is this guy's a big body. I'm kind of surprised he's not off the board yet. I feel pretty good about taking him in the fourth round. Tony Finau. Yeah. Big Utah Love guy. Tony Finau. Love Tony Finau. But now what do you think about his the inconsistency of his golf swing though? Or like the his mechanics? What do you think about his mechanics, Riley? Um, I mean it's different, but like obviously he's won some events on tour he's had a really good career so i mean that guy like there's videos of him hitting over 200 ball speeds like he has it in the tank he just doesn't use it Hmm. interesting anyway sometimes people got ugly jump shots but they go in you know that's fine i actually played tony finau's home course the other week yeah how'd that go for that's sick i got carried in a 2v2 scramble it was a great time we won i like that for (laughs) you um okay full transparency i had uh say to gala as my power forward so we're gonna make a quick little audible here um i'm gonna go with a a real animated guy at my power forward uh he's, you know he's he's gonna be the light and the energy of my team good locker room guy um he's real with himself he's honest he holds people accountable i'm gonna go with tyrell hatton at my power forward <laughs> he's mm. funny too i like him a lot i like him a <laughs> he's lot. funny too the clips yeah. of him where he'll he's... like shake it'll be like great shot ty like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <He's so funny. laughs> he'll yeah he has the negative self-talk that's why he's funny but he's yeah, real he's like ne- I, they're yeah maybe that's they're the never gonna be able to mic of. him up no, like the guy there's a couple of. the couple times they mic'd him, he like was like, Oh my he's like for F sakes. Like he's just like <laughs> he's just I think, guy though. Yeah, I think this is the guy I was try- I was thinking of, but maybe he's not built like a fullback and I was completely wrong. No, he's, he's, uh, he's no he's pretty he's, he's, he's not pretty like he's kind of a wide body. He's stout. Like okay, guy. this is one hundred percent the guy then he like he like cusses at himself when he misses and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, has a British accent. That's him. That's yeah. him. He was he was eating on Masters Sunday. He was having a hell of a round. One of my favorite clips of him is like I think I don't know if it was from the European tour or who posted it, but he like has an iron in his hand and he pulls it like way left and he's just kind of staring at it and he's like, you know, that'd be a really good shot if the pin was thirty yards left of where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the one where he's like setting up over the ball and then you hear a porta potty slam and he looks over it was and he's like, yeah, fiance. <laughs> It's so that, funny, dude. That's comedy. He like point. He like turns it. He's like, "That's my wife." And then it does like the office cut <laughs> over to zoom that's in. Awesome. It's, it's, it's so good. That's why I need him on my team, man. He's a good locker room guy. Yeah. Nah, he's <laughs> awesome. Nah, he's actually funny. He's definitely someone that doesn't take himself too seriously, even yeah. though he's like definitely mad. That. Like, yeah, like. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, uh, I feel like. This guy is gonna be definitely be the agitator of my team. He's he's not gonna get along with everybody, but when it's game time, like he makes stuff happen. So give me Brooks, give me Brooksy, um, mm. Brooksy at the power forward. Good selection. Brooksy, Brooksy versus Bryce, Bryce in power forward yeah. matchup between you and Tom. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a battle. It's a battle. It's just gonna be special. That's that's the matchup to watch for sure. Um, I, I I'll go. Game. I'll go small forward here. Uh, let's get a let's get a young piece to go with the guys I have here. Let's go Ludwig Oberg at the three. Outstanding Ludwig pronunciation. Oberg. Thank you, nice. thank you. Let's go Ludwig Oberg at the three, and then I'm I I have to I have to ask here. Can I can I take Steph Curry at my two? Can I take golf I mean, Steph Curry at my shooting? No. Guard? There you go. The verdict is in. Yeah, the verdict is in. No chance. That's fine. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go Colin Moore Cow at my two again. Nice. Uh, It's uh, back to me, right? Um, your center. Oh man. I feel like I need to balance my team out. This may not be the best player, but he's the best player for my team. Um, this is my uh Glenn Big Baby Davis. Give me <laughs> give me give me John Daly at the five, man. Just give just give me John Daly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> big baby. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like he's he's maybe showing up for games. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot around, no way. No, no way. walk on. on. Yeah. Have a good walk on. Ready, ready to just step yeah. up with the opportunity. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. That's a good pick, man. Um, my center, man. I'm going. I this guy is he's he's built like a hooper. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, 
he looks like an athlete out there. Um, he, he walks the course like an athlete. I wouldn't be surprised if you throw a lob up to him if you could go catch it. Give me Matt Kuchar. Matt Kuchar at the center. Oh. I think he stands a good 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he's he's, yeah, he's got the there. random guys out there. Matt Kuchar's a stick, bro. What are you talking about? I mean, they're all a stick. They're on tour. Okay, Matt Kuchar's know. like – Matt Kuchar's shooting his free throws underhand for sure. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> he's going to he's gonna need somebody to hold him up to the rim if he ever has a chance of, like, looking at it. It's crazy. Oh, man. Shout out to Kuch, man. It's a good guy. <laughs> Uh, okay, dude. Right, Riley <laughs> with your center and then your walk on pitch. Okay, so for my center, this guy, he's exactly what I'm looking for a center. Like this this man is dominating the paint. He's comparable to peak bulk Bryson, the big okay. Austrian Sepp Straka. Nice. Oh, nice. Good pick. Good and pick. then let's see. And then I'm taking for my walk on. Um, someone who's been working really hard. He had his PGA Tour card last year, but has been on the Corn Ferry Tour this year. Uh, just won last week. I think he is, I mean, he's on the way back up. So we're loving the vibes. He also has a vodka sponsor, which is great for the locker room. Harry Higgs. Wow. What vodka is it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it feels like a no free ads podcast. So I don't know if we want to okay. do that out. But- I mean, uh, if they're no, no, we're always somebody. looking. Yeah, we're always looking oh. for ad. Yeah, we will uh, sell out. We will sell out. <laughs> Except for one thing. There's only one thing we won't sell. Out. Yeah, some of us have overcome our personal differences with certain companies if they're willing to sell out for us, and some of us have. <laughs> Let's. No see. company oh, has all, actually. Us, his big sponsor is Dude Wipes. I'm pretty sure he's sponsored by. <laughs> I forgot. I, for, I, I forget what the vodka lot. company is. Like um. That's all good. It's not important. I don't drink vodka. I was just curious. Uh, okay. You don't have sleeves on, dude. Stop making that face. I'm cool, man. I'm I'm, I'm relaxed. We're recording a podcast here. My walk on. Um, this guy kind of jumped on the scene, kind of at the the latter part of last year, kind of after the tour championship, when there's kind of just like random tournaments that like guys who were trying to get their name out there and and get a couple wins under their belt and get some momentum into the next season. Um. Came out on the scene with arguably one of the smoothest and, and most aesthetically pleasing uh, swings I've seen in a long time. I got Jake Knapp. Jake Knapp as my walk mm. This guy has a great mm. swing, man. A young nice. kid, you know. Good pick. Real, real go-getter, I think. I don't really know. To, to be honest, I just like his swing a lot. So, yeah. like Great him. hair, too. Great hair, man. Great hair. Yeah. That's going to be – that's big for, like, your guys' publicity. Good general. marketability, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. He's a poster child type of guy, yeah. Hundred percent. Um. So at my walk on, uh, this is so. Uh, Luke kind of alluded to it, but this is my anti John Daly. If if like he goes to jail and he can't make it to the T box, this guy is gonna step in and he's just a pros pro man. Give me Podrick Harrington. Mm. Podrick Harrington. He's kind of a crazy person. I feel like. No man, he's he's, always, he's still he's, playing. He's no, but he's, he's looking always looking for ways to get better. Yeah, man, come on. He's got crazy eyes, though. I feel like he's like yeah, always locked in. <laughs> Irish guy, man. Yeah, hey, he's a winner though. I mean, Irish ties. Well, all right, James, up to you, um, man. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, Riley, I might need your help pronouncing this one. Um, you can tell me if I do pronounce his name wrong. I'm gonna go Sungjae Im. Nice. At my walk on. South Korea. Yeah, yes, he's Sung nice. So. He's nice. nice. Yeah. Sung Jae E. He's nice. He's he's got a nice short game. Yeah. His his putting is yeah. questionable at the moment though. So like he's yeah, not but, making yeah. free throws for you. No. Like, that's okay. That's okay. We but like middies. We don't middies, need him to do that. Pull yeah. ups. But like, we don't need him to do that as a walk on. Yeah. No, <laughs> he's not even gonna get that opportunity. Like no. no, no. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually it's actually fun. It's actually funny high, that Tom picked him because like Tom's a big Sean Livingston guy. Yeah, so I am. It's like he's like yeah. literally Sean Livingston. That's awesome. Look at that. I think I built the roster that I wanted, yo, man. Yo, Tom, I saw a crazy tweet. Speaking of Sean Livingston and speaking of you, um, and this is completely off topic, so I apologize. Okay, that's fine. Someone said TJ McConnell is the Luka Doncic of Sean Livingston's. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I'm gonna have to agree with that right now. With the way my guy T.J. is awesome. playing, dude. 
<laughs> it just felt really up your lane. Like, yeah, 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 dude, yeah that, that is right up my lane. Yeah, that's right down. <laughs> my down TJ lane. agenda is so strong right now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Unfortunately, you cut your hair. You cut your hair though. If you were really about it, you would have let the hair go. I would have let my hair go, but yeah. um, get a good know, military sometimes, cut. Not for sometimes much. you, sometimes you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm. Yeah, Jared, what you got for us, man? I'm excited for this one. <sighs> well, I don't, don't, yeah, don't gas it too much, but you know, Riley, I know I don't have to tell you this, man. I really don't because you're probably way better. And we'll ever be at golf. But what really changed my life and helped me be great was 50 chips a night, man. That's what's going to get my game right. Nice and simple and easy. I love that. Yeah. Love that. It's really good. He's like, bro, what, what is he 50 chips about? a night, Riley. 50 <laughs> chips a night, man. It's going to help you out. It's like, and what made me much better, my scores went way down. Yeah, it keeps the yips away. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, we'll and to, hey, we'll chips, yips. I don't know. Have you used yips yet? I don't know. No. Yes. Um, I, I do have uh, I do have new news for the pod. Uh, set my net up today. Mm, nice. He's back. Rain, rain session and he's the net's back. ready. Huge. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, man. man. Yeah. Really awesome. Yeah, yeah we're gonna man. exactly. We're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna nail it down to only one club throw a, a round now. That's good. That's really good. I appreciate that. I like this guy. That's improvement. Um, Riley. We love growth. Riley, brother, thank you for hopping on tonight. This has been a really fun conversation. I like talking golf with the guys. It's fun for me to really listen and, and learn more because obviously I don't I don't play a lot. and So I, I had a really fun time tonight listening to all this. Yeah, yeah Riley, no, I appreciate you, you guys having me. Thank yeah, you so thank much you. for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, you're the man. Let's Episode get out there. 96. He's your favorite walk-ons. We're walking out.